It's the first time that I was completely overwhelmed by a piece and started crying. And I came back from my studies in Germany and my complete process and execution application of paint on the canvas has changed, absolutely changed. I'm Megan Orn, I'm an abstract expressionist. I use vibrant colors as well as a variety of materials. I even repurpose materials to add to my work as well. I paint because I need to paint. It's, it's in my soul. It's a passion I've always had and it's a form of release and expression where sometimes if I feel like I'm missing the words, I can express myself and communicate through my brushstrokes, my energy, as well as the images that I produce and the colors that I've chosen. It is my way of communication. So the theme to my artwork, it's organized chaos. What that means are all of my paintings are psychological landscapes, meaning from people's past associations in their life, we all as humans like to categorize things so we can better understand them. What I've done is created a psychological landscape for the viewer to assess my work, look at the title of the painting, which is an individual's name. From their experiences in life, they interpret the name, they interpret the images, they interpret the colors so that they can connect with the art to make it something for themselves. And whatever their experience has been in the past, they categorize it for themselves. My source of inspiration, I think just like anyone, is the experiences in life. Traveling and coming in contact with other individuals and from that, I learn new things. I love learning because your world, you think you know everything and as you learn, your world becomes, it's apparent how much you don't know and it's fascinating all the different paths and lives um, that people have had and which way they've taken. What I've done is I explore my own heritage and traveling, which are the inspiration for the names of my paintings or people that I've come in contact with. So it's not just about the painting, it is about the title and how we're going to comprehend, understand, and translate that. Oh wow, well, everybody has writer's block. Whenever I've had the block, I take a break from what I'm doing and maybe I'll explore other avenues such as maybe I'll take up sewing for a bit, learning an instrument such as learning the guitar. I've studied a lot of languages and mastered none of them, but <laughs> it's fascinating what you can learn in the different cultures and ideas. And I think when I become dry, I look to go explore and travel so that I get that new refreshing start, that new inspiration. There's a plethora of different artists that do inspire me. I mean, We've got all the artists, abstract expressionists. I mean, Gerhard Richter is definitely an absolute favorite of mine. Mark Rothko, Anselm Kiefer, Sigmund Polka, Lee Krasner, Jackson Pollock. Whether they're American, German, mostly tend to be European. I have found some inspiration in Zul Solar, which is an Argentinian artist. Very different from mine, but I love the passion, the ideas that he has behind his work. And though ours are two completely different approaches to the artwork, he does inspire me with his different ideas and how he executes his work. I use some of the similar techniques of Jackson Pollock. However, Jackson Pollock, he would look at the entire canvas and he would drip paint and splatter it around the entire canvas where mine is more controlled in different shapes and different forms. And I also start to incorporate different personal objects, something that has some sentimental value, such as in this one, I had flowers um, that I'd gotten for my birthday. And instead of discarding them because they were a gift and they had some emotional basis and, and meaning to me, I didn't want to just discard them. So what I've done is I've repurpose them and instead of giving them more of a long lasting life and I've varnished them and encased them in the painting. So my paintings also are about memorabilia, sentimental value, as well as the aesthetic and composition. Uh, one of my favorite questions, because you always get this kind of questions whenever you're talking about abstract expressionism. I think you have to look back at the history and what the possible meanings of how it started. So abstract expressionism started post-World War II. A lot of people were repressing emotions. World War II ended, people were full of emotions and expressions. And from that, all of a sudden, things that do not have a physical identity, you are now giving a physical identity. You can't see happiness or sadness or suffering or depression. Instead, 
we've now taken it, translated it, put it into a physical form, and it's represented now in the different strokes, the different applications of the paint. And though a lot of people say, oh, my children can do that, when you're actually giving someone the task to actually be vulnerable, give them that platform to put their emotions on a canvas, very few people feel comfortable or confident enough to show that vulnerability and express themselves on the canvas. Whereas an artist who's working with that, that's what we're doing. We're showing our vulnerable state. Um, the kids, of course, they can express themselves. They're completely great with expressing their emotions. And some, are, some children are great at doing that. However, when the sophistication comes to actually controlling what they are wanting to express, that's what we're looking to communicate. For someone who's not been exposed to this type of artwork or doesn't quite understand it, I'm not judgmental. Everybody has had different paths in life and whatever it is, I don't want to discard anybody who's not had the opportunity. I have a conversation with them. First, I ask them questions. Do they find something attractive? Because if they're finding something attractive or connecting to the painting, that means their intuition is telling them that there's something in the work. And though they might not have the academic or educated response, they are identifying something. So with those people would have a conversation, um, even having different classes or workshops so that they can experience and realize that this is a process. It is a different way to execute and make artwork. Talking and working with my professor back in university, I was doing a lot of kind of surreal portraitures, a lot of realistic type paintings. Had the opportunity, got a scholarship to go study in Berlin, Germany, and I walked into the Neue Gallery in Berlin, and Gerhard Richter's painting, at Atelier, hit me in the face, and it's the first time that I was completely overwhelmed by a piece and started crying. And I came back from my studies in Germany and my complete process and execution application of paint on the canvas has changed, absolutely changed. And my professor had said that it was like somebody switched on a light. It was two different people. I went away, I came back and it was a whole different person. Um, it became a lot of experimenting, uh, playing with color and, and working with a lot of freedom. And I have to say thank you to my professors because they gave me a lot of freedom and motivation to do what I needed to do. I would say that I was speaking to a very well-known agent in the world and was talking to him about what, what paths we could take with my artwork next. And he was just saying to get you there, to, to find that solid, to find yourself, just keep painting, keep painting. And he always references Van Gogh. Van Gogh painted hundreds of paintings and though didn't sell or did sell one in his life, always up for debate. He's saying just continuously work, even if it's horrible, if it's crap, you have to work through those challenges, through those obstacles to get to where you need to be. And if you don't challenge, if you don't face those blocks, you're not going to get to that next level. Exhibiting anywhere is amazing. It doesn't matter if it's local, internationally, it's for me, always showing a painting is, it's a rush. The organization, it's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, but it's something that I love to do and arrange and curate and find different ways to present the whole aesthetics of the show. As far as going international, if the opportunity presents itself, absolutely. Just be cautious of what's legit and what's not legit because there are a lot of barriers, challenges. Is it going to be financially valuable? doing your research on the international so shows and seeing if it is the right path for you and assessing it that way and just taking any opportunity but judging your opportunities what's going to be the best for you because it's not the same platform for everyone working with color space has actually been an amazing experience it's been beneficial it's nice because you get that opportunity to show but you don't get the same pressure as you might get with a gallery that whole stigma it's a stress-free environment with a lot of opportunity and none of the let's say none of the hassle um, <laughs> And I think it's it's a freeing space in the fact that they want to promote the work, they want the opportunities for everyone, and they're giving it to artists and they're finding the correct space. And it's not just in a confined gallery space, it's everywhere, which art should be anyways. So having that versatility and that structure, it's it's been quite phenomenal. So if people want to find my work or they want to follow me, they can find me on Instagram. 
More Art, which is my first initial last name, underscore art. Facebook is also More Art, but it's More Space Art. Or just Google me and something should pop up and you should be able to find my work.